Looking for the best card game accessories? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products providing priceless protection. Shop at Ultimate Guard through the link in the description and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another Brawl gameplay video. The format dropped the historic part of Historic Brawl and now it's simply known as Brawl, so that'll make things a bit easier going forward. And I'm bringing a pretty awesome commander today, Narset Enlightened Master from Counts of Tarkir, a 6 mana 3 2 with first strike and hexproof, so that built in protection is key. And whenever Narset attacks, we get to exile the top 4 cards of our library until end of turn we may cast non creature spells from among those without paying their mana costs. So we're going to try to abuse that ability by including some of the most expensive non-creature spells available on Arena, and those include some pretty ridiculous cards such as Omniscience, so we can now cast all our spells for free from our hand, and that can lead to a pretty easy win. And then we've got some very fun engine enchantments, some of my all-time favorites like Arcane Bombardment and Thousand Year Storm, which get a lot better if we can cast them for free and cast our author spells for free, as we'll be able to get immediate value from them. And then I've split up the deck into a few different categories, starting with the Mana Acceleration, of course, to try and get Narset in play a few turns ahead of schedule. And those also include Treasure Makers. And of course, all these spells are still non-creatures that we can hit with Narset. No single creature in the main deck. So the only cards we don't want to hit are lands. Everything else is fair game. So we've got a pretty nice hit rate with Narset. And then we've got our interaction, including some spot removal spells. Most of them want to be instant speed, so we can potentially attack with Narset. And then if we hit some of those instant speed removal spells, we can still cast them, potentially clearing some of the opponent's blockers before they get a chance to block our 3-2 first strike, which they might be equipped to do. And then we've got some ways to protect Narset as well. Cars like the Mithril Code to make it indestructible. Even Valor's Stance has the flexibility of being removal or making Narset indestructible at instant speed. And then we get to some of the payoff cards, and that's the biggest category of this deck, including more interaction, some of the most ridiculous spells on Arena, and some of these we can also cycle away for one or two mana, so they won't be stuck in our hand if we draw them naturally. And then the mana base also got upgraded now, with the new fetch lands from Kaz of Tarkir, so three plus color decks are more consistent than ever before, as we can easily fetch up our trial land or the various shock lands to give us that consistency. And then uh, the uh, lands like Seagate Restoration and Emirius Call are also perfect here, as we can play them as lands or as expensive spells that we maybe get to play for free thanks to Narset. So let's go with a deeper dive now, starting with our mana acceleration. We've got the typical two mana ramp artifacts, Arcane Signet, Cold Steel Heart, Guardian Idol, Mindstone, and the new Iron Crag. Then we've got some treasure makers with Seize the Spoils, which can also discard and draw. Same with Prismari Command, can also be an answer to opposing artifacts. And then at four mana, there's Big Score and Pirate's Pillage. We've got some 3 mana ramp with the Celestus, giving us a bit of life gain and card selection as the game goes on. And then Warm Power Stone's also awesome, sending up a turn 4 Narset potentially. And then a Chandra can take out a creature dealing 4 damage and can also add double red with a plus 1. We've got Narset of the Ancient Way, which can add mana to help us cast non-creature spells, so it doesn't necessarily ramp into our commander, but it can help set up some of our other expensive non-creature spells. And then the minus two is actually quite synergistic here, since our deck is naturally going to end up with a lot of expensive spells stuck in our hand that we can now discard, dealing damage equal to their mana value to an opposing creature or planeswalker. And then we've got some more ramp artifacts with Firemind Vessel, Hedron Archive, and Gilded Lotus. I'm excluding alchemy cards, so so you won't see those in the deck. And then taking a look at our interaction, of course we've got Source to Plowshares, Lightning Bolt at 1 mana, nice instant speed removal, and the new Get Lost I'm also a fan of now. And then I mentioned Valor Stands can take out larger creatures or make Narset indestructible. We also have a few counter spells with Wash Away, 1 mana answer to opposing commanders, and the classic counter spell. Good ways to protect Narset, but they can be a little bit awkward if we exile them with the ability, since we won't be able to necessarily cast them. So counter spells are not at their best in this deck, which is probably a good thing. And then Brainstorm now is also better than ever, since we've got all these new fetch lands, so we can potentially Brainstorm, put some useless cards on top, and then shuffle them away after fetching. Or we can keep the Brainstorm until after we can set up an attack with Narset, and then actually purposefully put some expensive cards on top of the deck, so we're guaranteed to find them with Narset, and that way we get to immediately cast them for free, which is also a lot of fun. Then a Warren slash Warden, we can use the Warren half early as interaction, and then if we find it with Narset, make a 4-4 flying token, also pretty cute. 
Then we've got Lightning Helix as more removal, and then Angel Fire Ignition can potentially be combined with Narset in the same turn to immediately give it haste, 2 plus 1 counters, Vigilance Trample, Lifelink, and Indestructible, more importantly, so that's another way for Narset to attack into larger creatures, and we can also flash it back. And then Mithril Coat has Flash, which means that if we exile it with Narset's ability, we can still play it at instant speed after or before blockers are declared to make sure Narset survives. And then a cast out another versatile answer that can also be cycled for one mana. We've got commit to memory, both halves can be quite good. And then a time wipe as one of our few sweepers in the deck. At least here we can pick up our own Narset if we really need to hit that reset button. And then moving on to some of our more expensive spells, Mizzix's Mastery combines well with any discard effect, as we can potentially put an expensive card in the graveyard and then cheaply replay it with Mizzix's Mastery. If we ever get a chance to overload this with a full graveyard, it can also lead to a lot of ridiculousness. We've got the new Lorien Revealed, can island cycle it early to get any of our lands, including our shock lands for instance, or tri lands, and then we can also draw three with it, so always nice to hit it with Narset. Then we've got a few ways to take extra turns, which can also be abused in a lot of different ways, especially Time Warp, since it doesn't exile itself, means we can maybe loop it with Arcane Bombardment, or maybe get multiple Storm copies with Thousand Year Storm and completely take over. Then a Farewell can deal with artifacts, enchantments, and graveyards. Usually don't want to exile our own Narset with it, but sometimes of course we can cast it before deploying Narset. Then a Shark Typhoon, also great to cast for 6 mana and generate a ton of sharks, but we can always cycle it early or make a larger shark token with it. Then there's Boon of the Wishgiver, another card that can be cycled for 1 mana, and then sometimes we get to draw 4 with it. Commands the Endgame is also great, especially if we already have a bunch of cards in hand, making a very large zombie army token. Imbolus's Clutches we can also use to steal an opposing commander. We've got Karn's Temporal Sundering, another extra turn card that also gets to bounce an opposing permanent back. River's Rebuke, of course, another way to clear the opponent's board. And then we mentioned Arcane Bombardment and a Thousand Year Storm, and these are also quite nice with some of the cheaper spells to help enable them. And then a Chandra also has a great synergy as we can potentially copy some of those expensive spells that we get to play for free with Narset. And then at 7 mana we've got Approach of the Second Sun as an additional win condition, can gain us some life back. We've got Alrun's Epiphany as another extra turn card, even the nerf version is good enough to play. And then a Curabessa Sea God, another bomb. A Lay Claim can also be cycled or steal an opposing permanent. Overflowing Insight to draw 7. Got the Masterpiece, which we can discard early to make a treasure token, so it also kind of counts as a ramp spell. Same with the Creative Outburst and Magma Opus. This one we're also very interested in uh, trying to cast, of course, as an 8-mana instant, but we're still very happy to discard it early to set up that early Narset. And then if we ever do get to cast it for free, it can also potentially tap some blockers down before the opponent gets a chance to ambush or attack her. And then at the Inspired Ultimatum, another awesome payoff card for a Jeskai deck. We've got Treasure Cruise and Dig Through Time, which we can routinely cast for very cheap, thanks to all the fetch lands and the earlier spells we're casting. Then we get to some of the ridiculous cards, like one with a Multiverse and Omniscience, to cast spells for free. Portal to Phyrexia can also maybe get Narset back from the graveyard if we don't send it back to the command zone. And then we mentioned Imiria's Call and Seagate Restoration as lands that are also very powerful if we ever get to cast them. And then a mana base has lots of fetch lands. On the right you can see all the fetch lands and all the fetchable lands, including our basics, shock lands and the Rogrin Triumph, which we'll often get if we don't mind having a tap land for a turn. And then we've got the channel lands for added interaction and then plenty of dual lands for additional mana fixing. Most of these will come into play untapped. I'm also a fan of the Scry Temples in this deck, since we can potentially set up our Narset attack with it by keeping an expensive card on top or scrying a land to the bottom before we attack. And then we've got a bit more utility with Cavern of Souls, which I'm also including to help make Narset uncounterable, which is one of its potential weaknesses. And then a Plaza of Heroes can also be another way of protecting Narset if we don't find another way to clear path. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the draw, facing Corvold, Junt, Sacrifice, and I'm liking this hand. Born Power Stone is going to do some heavy lifting here. And then Brainstorm could be excellent if we get an attack in with Narset to set it up. Let's Bolt a Bird. The Goose also just quite synergistic with Corvold. Don't often get to bolt a bird anymore, so got to take that opportunity. The next turn, play Temple. Innkeeper's next. 
And do I want a Sacred Foundry? A land 5, essentially. If they can deal with my Worn Power Stone, it could be okay. Otherwise, I maybe don't need it. So look for more interaction. Garden, make a token. So next turn we can expect Corvold. And yeah, if they tap out for Corvold and we get to tap out for Narset, I think we're happy. Small chance they can destroy it end of turn. They don't. And then there's a pretty limited number of answers to a hexproof creature. Sweepers and edict effects are the cards we're most afraid of. Okay, let's go. If they keep Corvold back, we still have a few options, including Narsets of the Ancient Way using the minus two to clear a path. We've got an eight mana card we could discard. Oof, Playcrafter, that's incredibly painful. The perfect answer to Narset. Yeah, that's going to be difficult to recover from. So we can still clear Corvolds before it gets too out of hand. But uh, getting back to 8 mana is going to be a challenge. So do we want to brainstorm now? Just to hit our land drop for the turn. Maybe worth it, so we can hold out hope for our master to make another appearance. And then uh, this turn, play Narset, could cycle Lake Claim. Since this is not something I'll be able to cast at instant speed after attacking with Narset. Sure, I guess that's reasonable. And then keep the brainstorm for now. And then I think it's still Treasure Cruise to deal with Corvolds. Could also now cycle Shark Typhoon to just draw a card and hang on to a late claim. Even though a large shark token could be a decent play next turn. Alright, we found a land. So next turn there's hope for our master to come back. And then we can certainly set up an exciting turn. Connections we don't mind seeing. Opponents also missing a land. And a dig through time can actually be a way to clean up our graveyard to pinpoint which card we get back with Arcane Bombardment. So we did not hit the land for Narset. This can still add mana. And then, what are we looking to do? Could still go for Bombardments. And then cast a Brainstorm. Which is still pretty good. And a free Treasure Cruise, why not? Picked up a land and we'll get to keep up Counterspell. Okay, so what do we put back? Nothing that I'll be able to cast with Narset in a timely fashion. So I don't think this matters too much. Alright, play land and pass with Counterspell up. Maybe I wanted to keep Masterpiece in hand, so next turn I could have cast Narset and keep up Counterspell. Might have been a little better than whatever we're keeping in hand right now. And then if we cast Counterspell we get to Treasure Cruise again too, so... <laughs> that might actually be worth it. Protect our Narset. Just a value here from Bombardment is great. And then we'll get to exile another card here. And a Lightning Bolt for free. Don't mind if I do. Take out the Innkeeper. And that's too much value for Corval to deal with. Awesome, a nice recovery from that Playcrafter. On to the next one. 
Okay, we're on the play, facing old Rudstein, so graveyard deck. And our hand seems okay. Time wipe can wipe the board. And we've got a little bit of mana acceleration, can cycle a lake claim. And then maybe start by fetching for a triome. Turn two pathway, turn three sundown pass. Could also fetch for like a steam vents if we need to lightning bolt an elf on turn one. Deathrite Shaman. Well, that's pretty good with our fetch land here. Now we do of course have a time wipe to eventually wipe the board. Although Deathrite is still kind of scary. So I'm torn whether I should take it out or just get our Triome, play idle, and then set up a turn four time wipe. If they can destroy the Guardian Idol, we might get punished. But uh, I'll try it out. So they could already play a turn 2. Old Rutstein if they'd like. Alright, that's fine. And then tapped Sacred Foundry, pass the turn. Put on to go to treasure in the meantime. Would have preferred them making an insect. There's another treasure. And then plenty of fuel for death rites. Our opponent can already cast a six drop here. So that's impressive. On turn three. It's gonna be Bojuga Bog instead. Thanks selling our graveyard. And then hopefully they cast a creature that dies to time wipe. A Rudstein attacks, we'll take it. Opponent is casting something big. It's gonna be the Lich. That's fine. Still dies to our time wipe. And a Lotus is nice too, but next turn we can already play Narset. Okay, so... We're back to kind of an equal board state. And there's Rudstein again. And a braid goes to the graveyard. So if we want to play around an Edict effect, making a sacrifice Narset, developing our mana with a Gilded Lotus could be better. If I play Lotus, we'll have four mana left. So we could still Prismari Command and combine it with a Lightning Bolt to take out Old Rudstein. I think I'm just playing Narset. Our opponent's probably more likely to have answers to our Gilded Lotus than they are to answer Narset at this point. But uh, we'll see. Alright, we get to untap and the uh, Temporal Sundering is awesome. So, can bounce a Rudstein, setting up a pretty clean attack. Maybe a protection spell incoming. No, just a costly plunder to sacrifice and draw. Alright, so we'll get in, trigger Narset. And hopefully no shenanigans afoot so we can attack again. And now by hitting a Valor Stance we actually could have protected Narset by making it indestructible. Would have been a nice answer to Old Rothstein as well. So, get to draw four. And then play a land for the turn. Fetch a tapped shock land. And take our turn. I guess I might have wanted to cast this just to put an extra card in graveyard for dig through time here. So that was a small error. But for now we can attack, see what else we find with Narset. And take it from there. Casting a portal to Phyrexia with plenty of creatures in graveyards, also pretty nice. Or we can exile the graveyard with a farewell. 
Pulling on trumps. And a deadly dispute to draw. Okay, so we've got options. Don't mind exiling the graveyard. And then maybe exile artifacts as well. Does make our dig through time a little bit worse. But the opponent can probably use their graveyard better than I can. Could also dig through time first here. So no shortage of options. Exiling their treasure. Exiling graveyards and then just playing a bunch of ramp seems good to me. So artifacts and graveyards. Then play archive. Lotus. And then pass with dig through time available. Alright, Invoke Despair is an answer to Narset. Could also try and find an answer with Prismari Command, but it's not like we have a lot of counter spells, so I think Invoke Despair happens. Let Narset go to the graveyard where I can delve it away with Dig Through Time, or we can leave it in the graveyard to eventually get back with Portal. If they destroy my portal, I could regret it. So I think it's safer to just uh, delve it with Dig Through Time. And then find some goodies, including one with a multiverse and an overflowing insight, I want to say. Take our turn. Opponent has to discard to hand size. Discarding a Gear Hulk that they're maybe gonna try and reanimate. We can play one with a multiverse. Cast a free overflowing insight, although we'll have to discard to hand size a bunch, so maybe it's portal to Phyrexia after all. Alright, Mizzix Mastery, get back, dig through time, also appealing. Can cast this for four mana. Finding, who a Thousand Year Storm, and uh, maybe just a land at this point. Counter spell on top. Okay, so can cast one more spell for free. Let's make it probably a portal to Phyrexia, kind of as a distraction here almost. Pass it back. And then we've got an awesome turn coming up here with Thousand Year Storm. Don't mind if Portal gets answered. Ooh, Casualties of War, that's a good one. Deals with both my enchantment and my artifact. Wish we could have counterspelled that. Alright, that's a setback. So now it's going to be a bit harder to combo with Thousand Year Storm. Still very much possible, but uh, just won't get as much value. So let's say we cast it here. I have six mana left. Prismari Command can also make a treasure, so we can maybe start with Bolts, then Prismari Command, and then hope to find something useful afterwards. Or we can just replay Narset and then pass with Counterspell Backup. I think that's better. And then once we attack with Narset, our Thousand Year Storm is going to be a bit more effective. And then sure, we can play Cold Steel Heart. There is a Hive that could mess with our graveyard. But at this point, we don't really need it. Meadog Massacre for two. Yeah, that's another answer to Narset, so let's deal with it. They had the Massacre, the Invoke Despair. Hopefully that's it. And a Toski, that's fine. Okay, we get to 
untap with Narset once again, and we've got some goodies in hand. So let's start by attacking. Oh yes. Step one, Thousand Year Storm. Oh no, her opponent concedes, what a shame. So let's map out this turn just for my own curiosity. So we can cast Thousand Year Storm, that's six mana right here, we have eight mana left and still haven't played land for the turn. Then cast Reverse Rebuke as our first instant or sorcery, Bounce Toski. Then we can cast a Lightning Bolt, seven mana left, get to make a copy, so that's six damage. Cast our free Warden, making three 4-4 four, four flyers, our storm count keeps increasing. Then now we can cast our Prismari command to make a treasure and then maybe draw to discard to or deal two damage. And then thanks to all the storm copies, we're actually generating additional mana by making a treasure token. So we'll still have enough mana to cast our Magma Opus now and make five or six copies or maybe overflowing insight to draw all the cards we want. Can maybe even mill the opponent out if we get a high enough storm count. And then in the meantime, we would have seen even more cards with Prismari command to try and increase that storm count even more. And if we find any treasure makers while we're going off with our Thousand Year Storm. Those are also quite amazing. So yeah, it would have been a pretty awesome turn. Sadly, didn't get to see it in action, but we can still use our imagination. Okay, we're on the draw facing Reese tokens. And uh, yeah, this hand's pretty awkward. Wash away might be too late and we don't have any ramp or sweepers, which is what we're looking for. This is still on the slower end of the spectrum, but we'll try it out. At least we've got a turn to Cold Steel Heart. Spot removal like get lost, not great, but at least this can also hit enchantments. And then, sure, we can fetch for a tapped Triumph here. And that will give us pretty solid mana. And then for Epiphany, maybe on turn three. Okay, now we can also go for the other Narset. And this name's probably red, in case we find the ultimatum later. Voice of Resurgence will punish us for casting spells in their turn. Okay, so if we play Narset and plus up to five loyalty, they might be able to make two tokens at instant speed and then essentially take her out. So it might be better off going Guardian Idol and then Fortel Epiphany. Nothing I want to get lost right now. All right, opponent had a virtue of loyalty, so yeah, they would have been able to take out Narset. Now five mana, they can cast the enchantments or Wolf of Haven into a four drop. Right, opponent passes. So we can now play Narset, and that's the plan. And then next turn, maybe even take an extra turn with Epiphany, so we get to enable it twice. But our opponent can also go off with Reese here in the meantime. For now, Wandering Emperor. So only two tokens to copy, but they could make another Samurai first. And then activate. Or we could see them play Virtue of Loyalty, which is also pretty solid. Okay. So they can likely take out Narset, although never mind. Angel Fire Ignition was a perfect draw. So we can attack without worrying about Narsa dying. And then we'll still be able to maybe play Narsa of the Ancient Way. Could also steal Reese or Virtue of Loyalty, but want to protect Narsa at all costs. And then Get Lost could also go after Virtue of Loyalty, of course. Ooh, nice. One with the Multiverse. And a Brainstorm, which can set up our next Narset attack. Back to wandering. Land on top. Another land incoming, we can fetch that away. So yeah, I don't think this is a situation where we Brainstorm and then fetch afterwards. 
I'd rather keep those expensive spells on top. An approach I could still cast for free, or we can go for Embolus's clutches. Although Narset's enough to take out Reese. Yeah, let's get the free approach value, I guess. Ooh, and a Temporal Sundering we'll definitely want to set up here. So we'll go for Narset. Get rid of Reese. And then I don't want to brainstorm yet, since that's going to be keeping expensive spells on top. Lorian Revealed coming up. So Reese down. And then we can still brainstorm. And then we can put a Curabus the Sea God as the card will cast for free, and then a big score as our draw step for next turn. Okay, not bad. So we'll be able to take an extra turn with Epiphany, an extra turn with the Sundering. Poseidon, a nice answer to our enchantment. Do I want to shuffle? I actually don't mind. I don't think we need Best the Sea God to win, even though it could have been fun. I don't mind getting an extra land here. There's Reese. They can take out Narset, losing a creature in the process. I will meditate on defeat. Okay. So if we Temporal Sundering can clear a token, Pun can still double block Narset. And then can I flashback Ignition? Um, I'm one mana short, I believe. So, interesting spot. Flashing back ignition is probably the starting point. Then we can attack, see what we hit. Or I could take an extra turn just to kind of develop my mana. And then um, maybe cycle Lorian Reveal just to hit an extra land drop. And then set up ignition with an extra turn card. Yeah, that seems good to me. So do this. Cycle. Untap land is fine. Play tap steam vents. No attack with Narset this turn since we don't want to lose her. And then now we can Angel Fire Ignition alongside a Temporal Sundering to make sure Narset can keep connecting. And we'll take an extra turn, can bounce a token, since we might end up stealing Virtue of Loyalty. And yeah, this is pretty brutal. Magma Opus can take out Reese. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. Still have a bunch of other spells we can cast for free, and that's just too much value. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, facing Emoti, blue-green ramp. And our hand is missing a bit of ramp, so that's a mulligan. This is also quite awkward with two delve spells and just a bunch of expensive cards. This is better. And then... Could just keep Power Stone, get rid of Celestus. And then Island Cycle, Lorian Revealed. Eventually get it back with Mizzix Mastery. Don't hate that idea. And then for now I don't mind a scry, in case we can find a 2 mana accelerant. Omniscience we're going to be pretty far from casting, so put that on the bottom. Although we'll shuffle it back in a second with island cycling. But it does have the turn 1 elf. And uh, yeah, let's just pass. Could have also main phase island cycled, get the triome and play the tapped triome to get it out of the way. But I'll just get an untapped land here. And we need a fancy dual land. Now I'll just get a basic.
play Power Stone, and yeah, hopefully play a Narset next turn. Our opponent can cast Emoti, cascade into another Ramp spell, most likely. It's gonna be a Brainstorm instead. Can have a look at what they revealed with the Cascade, and there are some scary cards in there. Okay, so we resolve Narset. Yeah, worst case scenario, I guess a River's Rebuke can bounce everything back next turn. Or maybe your opponent can take a bunch of extra turns themselves and uh, overpower us that way. At least the Mithril Coat will protect Narset once it attacks. There's a double blue. Do we see a rebuke? A fight rigging, that's fine. We have a swords to deal with the creature that might enable it. And a Paradise Druid. So no great blocks for Narset here. And no great attacks either. So step one attack. See what we hit with Narset. Alright, Brainstorm, nice alongside our fetch land, or we could set up our next Narset attack, which I also don't mind. And then the Emirios call is pretty good value. So we want to cast a Brainstorm now, and then I only get to keep one card on top of the deck, basically. Could also Mizzix Mastery, make some more Angels. Alright, so Seagate Restoration versus Overflowing Insight. I don't think we're fetching anything away, so I guess we can hide one card. Let's make it Mizzix Mastery, which I don't think we're casting here. And then I want to cast an Overflowing Insight for free. So that's the order. Play Cold Steel Hearts on white. And then I might want to Swords to Plowshare something now. Let's just pass. Not too bothered by Emoti's Cascade. Would rather prevent Fight Rigging from going off. Nykthos also adds a bit of extra mana here. In a pinch we could always fetch and then both get Lost and Swords. We'll just miss out on that inside value. A Gore Claw resolves. And Galta. Oof, Galta is scary. It's a heavy cascade and also a creature to go with fight rigging, so we will end up removing it. Cascade into a Lenor Elves, that's not too bad. Alright, so we'll wait for the fight rigging trigger, although they don't have a reason to target Galta itself since they. Just need to have a different creature with power 7 or less. Maybe just Swords Galta, even though they gain a bunch of life. Since Gedlos can also get rid of the enchantment later. And then we'll flash in the Mithril Code just to protect Narset here. Take our turn. And then attack. Getting our free Overflowing Insight and a Time Warp, why not? And yeah, that's enough for a concession. Draw seven cards, take an extra turn, and then, by the way, we can also cast our Seagate Restoration after drawing seven to draw even more and have an unlimited hand size for the rest of the game. Still have our Mizzix Mastery to get stuff back, including the Time Warp, so there's no way our opponent survives here. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the draw, facing Yuri, a red-black sacrifice deck. So, how good is Mithril Coat? Could be alright, if they have an Edict effect to make a sacrifice a creature, it gets around indestructible. Our hand is relying pretty heavily on this Worn Power Stone. Turn 2 we can counterspell. Yeah, we can give it a shot. It's far from perfect. But it's functional. Polluted Delta, probably getting a blue-red 
Shockland here. And Yuri resolves. And if we don't need to counterspell anything, I can just get a tapped Triome instead. Midnight Reaper is a pretty good one. Yeah, let's just counter that. Make sure we don't fall too far behind on board. Alright, and then if Warren Power Stone survives, we could play Narset next turn already. For now, take two. Opponent passes with three mana up. So I wouldn't be surprised if they had an Edict effect here. But uh, gotta try it. Our alternative is draw a few cards with Lorian revealed, which isn't all that great. At least we're safe from spot removal, and a fanatical offering is what they had. Sacking the shambling gas to draw, make a treasure, grow Yuri. So a lot is happening. Then a map token also has pretty great synergy. Well, they need a pretty specific answer for Narset. Kalein is not one of them. If their plan is to make a large blocker, we've got the Mithril Code for protection at least. And Yuri starts growing here, revealing a Bolas of Citadel, that one's scary. Can easily lose to that next turn. And yep, opponent's gonna leave Yuri back, so we can attack. Also have Plans of Heroes available now, but Mithril Code's kind of a cleaner solution. Find a Lightning Helix, Swords, and Treasure Cruise. Okay, those are all pretty good. Can start with Swords on Yuri. Get that out of the way. Opponent's gonna draw. That happens. And then I probably want a Lightning Helix, Kalein as well, as opposed to going face. So Citadel is in hand, get to deal damage, and then a free treasure cruise to draw three is where we'll start. Okay, so we've got four, five, six, seven mana here this turn. So next turn we can one with a multiverse and maybe try to win with approach. So I could cast the approach now, maybe after fetching And then next turn, one with a multiverse. Can play a free Lorian reveal, draw three, and then maybe get deeper into the deck for approach. Now if we exile approach with Narset, it doesn't win us the game since we need to cast it from hand for this to work. All right, and our opponent found a Liliana, which is a perfect answer to Narset. So Narset down. But our opponent's also taking quite the hit from Bolas of Citadel. Just gotta hope there's a bunch of lands on top of the deck. For now, Narsa down. Back to the command zone. Don't have a plan of reanimating it. And a Thoughtseize probably takes her one with the multiverse now. Alright, that's a very big setback. Still have our Lorian Revealed to dig closer towards our approach, and then Temple can scry to the bottom. So we're now all in on the alternate win condition. Still at 22. So we might only need to survive a couple more turns. Shark Typhoon could also make a large shark token end of turn. 
Phoenix equals six potentially could threaten lethal. Still kind of liking the alternate win condition. So if we were to draw three, scry to the bottom. And then we can still draw with Shark Typhoon. Then next turn we draw Approach to win the game. Yeah, that seems decent to me. I guess we don't quite have enough blue mana to um, cycle the Shark Typhoon and play Temple right now, but we can still combine them next turn. Alright, so... I guess just go for Cold Steel Hearts on blue. And play Temple. Time Wipe could be okay, but we're on the combo plan. So yeah, next turn with a big score or a Shark Typhoon cycle, drawing to approach and win the game. Opponent needs a way to make us shuffle our deck or a way to just deal 22 damage. Down to two life now. And yeah, Boss of Citadel does have an alternate ability here, sacking 10 non-land permanents. 6, 7, 8, 9. One more. They get to activate it, attack for 7, and then Judith also triggers a bunch. And now giving Phase Breaker haste should get the job done. Alright, pretty sweet ending here. Boss of Citadel, and then Judith will trigger dealing 1 damage for each non-token creature that dies. So that's just enough here. And then Yuri will also trigger opponent going for Yuri first. Not sure what the idea is here. Maybe they don't see the Bola Citadel activation. Wow, alright, our opponent must have missed the lethal line with Citadel had they just activated it. I'm pretty sure we die. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and it's the mirror match. And our hand's not bad. We've got an answer to Narset actually with Time Wipe. And Counterspell could also maybe catch it. Turn 2 could discard Magma Opus to fast track our Narset. Although opposing counter spells could still be a bit of a concern. And I don't think we'll be able to wait until we play Narset with counter spell backup. So yeah, if the opponent's got the right interaction, this game could drag out and we might end up with two Narsets costing 10 mana. So for now we can fetch our Triome. Opponent gaining one life while I pay one life but at least the land we get here is a slight upgrade over just getting a basic. All right, so we can already keep up Counterspell. I guess there's a slight concern with Time Wipe being double white and me being unable to maybe play it if we lose Celestus and or the treasure. I'll go with the Sheevan Reef. And then I'm happy making a treasure. This way we get to play Celestus and keep up Counterspell, just in case. And then next turn we're potentially looking at Narset. Putin getting their own Triome. They are looking at the Celestus and a Vanish into Eternity to try and exile it. Well, we could Counterspell, but then I won't be able to play Narset still just to keep the Celestus for its card selection over time, basically. Don't think that's worth fighting over as much as I like the Celestus. And then now Temple. Do we want a land? Not necessarily. Hopefully we can just resolve Narset next turn. And then we'll have to watch out for opposing sweepers dealing with our commander. Alright, a smashing success, their opponent's a land destruction deck. That makes sense. Well, we'll counter that so we can resolve Narset and hopefully dodge a sweeper. And then now if they destroy my land, I don't mind. So, five mana. And it's a fairy, okay. Does restrict the timing on some of our spells, but 
I don't think it's a huge concern. So Narset can attack, go after Teferi, can maybe burn it out. And a Temporal Sundering. Wow, what a hand here. So we can play a free Temporal Sundering, bouncing Teferi, draw seven, make a pair of four fours, and then I can still cast an extra four four flyer from hand, take our extra turn, attack, and uh, yeah, that's going to be too much for the opponent to handle. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play facing Lord Skitter, so rats. Portal, maybe not at its best here if our opponent's got a bunch of 1-1 one -one tokens. I do like Lightning Bolts as the rest of my hands, not ideal, without any mana acceleration. This is also not perfect, but uh, at least a Hedron Archive can help ramp out Narset, can cycle Shark Typhoon, so we'll give it a shot. If we can make a 1-1 one -one Shark, that can also maybe help protect Narset from an Edict effect, making a sacrifice a creature. Depending on what type of Edict effect, of course, if it's a Shielder's Edict, they can just make a sacrifice a non-token. So I think we wait to make a 1-1 one -one Shark, and then Archive on 4. Okay, Pwn is going to make their own tokens with Bitter Blossom. So maybe it's more of a token deck than a rant deck. The good news is that they won't have any easy answers to a Hedron Archive. Pirate's Pillage. Probably not as good as just playing a Hedron Archive here. Okay, and then next turn, Narsets. I'll keep my Shark Token around. If we don't need to play Cavern, probably best to play other lands, especially if we're going to need to cast something like our uh, Ultimatum, which requires triple red. And Blood Artists can also be quite scary. Now if I want to get a red source with our fetch lands, I'll have to take three, which also starts adding up. I think it's still worth it though. Or we could just go Cavern, play Narset. Yeah, against this particular opponent, our life total is going to be under quite a bit of pressure. So I guess we'll play it safe. And then a Narset Human Monk. I guess we'll go for Human... And pass it back. And then next turn, Temporal Sundering. Could be very effective. Piper giving rats menace. Still acceptable. Take the hits. Okay, time to get in with Narsets. They don't have any great blocks. I guess they could block with Lord Skitter, Token, and Piper, so I may as well start with the uh, Temporal Sundering, I guess. Take an extra turn, bouncing a Lord Skitter. And attack. Finding a Chandra. Alright, now I regret not playing Chandra before taking extra turn. Still pretty good here. I'll just get a basic, make it an island. Copy Pirate's Pillage. which will uh, essentially pay for itself, and now we can big score during the opponent's turn as well. And then Chandra hasn't activated yet. Yeah, I guess we'll just add mana. And then I could also see taking out Blood Artists, since there's nothing for Piper to steal that's too exciting. And 
and then now we'll start by attacking. See what we hit, in case it's something nice we can copy it with Chandra. And a Seagate Restoration sounds excellent. So double that, which will result in quite a few cards. All right, I'm struggling to see all the cards in hand. Let's see, we've got Time Warp for an extra turn lined up. So that's probably game. Mizzix Mastery, get back Time Warp as well. All right, now I'm feeling bad for my opponents. Could have also started with one with a multiverse, I suppose. But our opponent has seen enough. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw, facing the God of Winter, so a Sultai snow deck. Our hand's missing a bit of mana acceleration, so we can do better. This one's also not great. Alright, probably have to keep this now. And then we can cycle Boon, wash away counters their commander, and hopefully we'll find some mana acceleration along the way. Our opponent could have their own counter spells as well, which is going to make things tricky. Alright, Brainstorm could be nice. We have a fetch land already. So, way to play that next turn once we can fetch. Visionary resolves. Still going to cycle... All right, and our approach we're not really interested in at the moment. So let's brainstorm. And a pillage we want to keep for sure. So approach can go and a land probably. And then I can fetch for just a basic island if I'd like. Can fetch end of turn as well if we don't need to wash away and then get a tapped triome instead of Getting a basic. And then turn 4 Pillage, turn 5 Narset is the plan. Alright, we can counter here. Could also get a Shock Land. I think an Island is good enough. So that was a good tempo play, a 1 mana answer to a 3 mana card. And inside our new draw step. So we'll go with the fetch land, plan to get a tapped triome. A replicating ring resolves. Can eventually give them a lot of mana, but hopefully the game doesn't go that long. So don't expect any answers to pirate spillage for now. And then what to discard. Warrant Warden's not particularly exciting here, so that can maybe go. Okay, now we've got a time wipe if we need to hit the reset button. But the primary game plan is still Narset. A relic for more mana. And there's the God of Winter. Okay, so our opponent can make a lot of mana next turn. I think we still commit to Narset. It wouldn't be a bad window for Time Wipe, to be fair. Deal with our two creatures, including Visionary, while they can't get any value. So maybe I should take it a turn slower here. And just wipe the board. And then next turn we can Narset, keep our treasures. Otherwise, if they did have an answer to Narset, we could have gotten ourselves into a lot of trouble. It's going to be Seagate Restoration for now. Another fetch land. Best case scenario, we draw a counter spell, which we can keep up with our treasures. Alright, for now, play Narset. And cross our fingers that it gets to untap. And then Temple can also be a way of keeping an expensive card on top before attacking. God of Winter, that's fine. 
and a search for Ascanta. Alright, so it looks like we'll get to attack. So we'll start with the temple. And that's certainly something we'll want to keep on top. Attack. And so we're guaranteed to hit one with the multiverse. And we found some other goodies. So play this for free. There's a Hedron Archive on top. Do we want to play that? Could also just draw seven. And yeah, our opponent has seen enough, understandably. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. Got early lightning bolt for a mana creature facing Tatiova, so blue-green ramp. Can also bolt after playing a turn three Narset of Mindstone, make red mana, still cast a bolt. But we'll be bolting Elenor Elves instead. Can't quite discard Masterpiece next turn, but gonna want to play Mindstone anyway. Now, Narset doesn't ramp into the other Narset, since this only makes mana for non-creature spells. But it's still quite nice being able to discard all these expensive spells, dealing a lot of damage to creatures and planeswalkers alike. Dryad, play an extra land. Okay, so they're setting up for Tatiova. Yeah, I think Narset take out Dryad is reasonable. And then discard Masterpiece. Next turn we could cast uh, Bolas's Clutches by adding mana here. So that could be a nice way of stealing Tatiova, but I doubt our opponent's gonna play their commander without getting immediate value. And Gross Spiral finds a land and a Provisioner. Still pretty good for us to steal. Even if it's no Tatiova. Also just an efficient use of my mana this turn. Then I can keep the fetch land to synergize with their provisioner. Stealing a land's actually also somewhat reasonable. Okay, a Shaya. And that's it for now. So we can now play in our sets. Make treasure. Can get Mountain or maybe a tapped Triome. And then we could take out a Shaya with a minus two by discarding Restoration. Don't hate that. Let thoughts flow like river rapids. And that's enough for a concession. Play Narset. And the opponent's not going to have an immediate answer. And then. Get to snowball that card advantage onto the next one. Okay, we're on the play and facing a tokens deck. We don't have a ton of sweepers in the deck, so it's all about getting Narset down as soon as possible. Our hand does have a little bit of ramp and helix, which does not deal for damage as it turns out. So I think we mulligan. This is missing the ramp. Still has a Helix, which we don't love, and then a bunch of expensive cards. Let's mulligan. No, this is much better. And then Ignition. Could be a way for Narsa to get through. Or we could keep Counterspell, which I could keep up on turn 2. If we start with Deserted Beach into Untapped Hallowed Fountain. Um, the way the sequencing works, I'm going to want a Power Stone into Narset. I think we actually ditched the counter spell, and then play a temple for now. Put on getting a timed garden with a fetch land, and yeah, hopefully power stone into Narsets, and then ignition to make sure it connects. And doesn't get taken out by a bunch of tokens. For now, a scoundrel making a treasure. 
So next turn we could already see Jetmir, although typically it's the type of card the opponent's going to want to play when they already have an established board. Power still resolves. I guess we do have to watch out for Mana Tithe countering our 6 drop next turn. Alright, Hotly, get a land. And hit us for one. Do we play around Mana Tithe? I don't think so. Alright, that resolves. If we were able to set up Narset plus Ignition next turn, then I could have considered it, but even if we play idle we would be a little bit short. So next turn we'll have an indestructible 5 power first striker attacking. And hopefully we'll find some goodies. Mikaeus can eventually pump their team. Benefiting from Rhythm, getting a plus one counter here. Alright, this one would have been nice to play for free, but uh, we'll see what happens. Attack for five. And wash away, not the best hit, but wow, we found a bunch more stuff. This is going to be glorious. So let's start with the Thousand Year Storm. And then we could potentially counter our own Guardian Idol just to increase our storm counts. I guess never mind. If we want to cast this, we need to cleave it so it's not actually a three mana counter spell. So that's not going to work. And then we'll go for Emirius Call and then commence the endgame. So we get to draw the most cards possible. Well, it's been a while since I've gone off with Thousand Year Storm, but this is a very nice way to do it. And how about a Lightning Bolt here? Copied multiple times. Just take out all the opponent's creatures. And yeah, that's enough for a concession. I'll take it. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we have a keepable hand facing Slimefoot and Squee. So they're gonna try to bring stuff back from the graveyard. Cast out exiling a creature could be a decent answer. And we can potentially even play it on turn 3 off a Guardian Idol. And then the Eventual goal will be to attack with Narset and uh, take an extra turn as well. Inquisition snipes our only target here, and it's pretty effective, since now we're unable to accelerate our mana. Probably gonna cycle Lay Claim and look for more ramp. Time wipe could reset the board. So we've got four, five, and six lined up. All right, opponent may be digging for a land drop here. And a land or elves. A rebuke. So we've got enough interaction here. Just need the mana to deploy Narset now. I'll hang on to cast out for Slimefoot and Squee if they decide to play it. And then Time Wipe can still catch the Lenor Elf. But exiling their commander is still a good idea. So we don't need to worry about it coming back from the graveyard. Opponent does send it back to the command zone, so don't need to worry about enchantment removal either. And then we'll fetch an island. Fabled Passage unable to get the shock lands, otherwise I might have considered getting a steam vents. 
since we do eventually need a lot of red mana for the ultimatum. Scavenging Ooze can uh, get rid of our graveyard, can be relevant for cards like Arcane Bombardment and Mizzix Mastery. Alright, we'll have to wait another turn on Narset, sadly. And then still hoping they don't have a clean answer to our Hexproof threat. Scavenging Ooze is gonna scavenge. At least there's no creatures in our graveyard to grow it, so they're gonna exile their own stuff. Okay, so our opponent is pretty much tapped out. And we're mainly afraid of an Edict effect making a sacrifice Narset next turn. And then Flood of Strand can fetch for a tapped Triome to fix our mana and get a tapped land out of the deck. Okay, Hive is fine. They know about Temporal Sundering, so leaving a blocker back is not really going to work out. Vraska, okay, that's fine. Can destroy Mindstone at most. That happens. Okay, so the coast is clear. Temporal Sundering bounce Ooze, attack Vraska. And that's two turns where we get to enable Narset. So we'll take an extra turn, bounce Ooze. And let's see what we can reveal. Well, only hit one card, but it's a pretty good one. Draw seven. And we also found a Brainstorm, that's excellent. That way we can put Omniscience on top and be guaranteed to cast it next turn. Okay, we'll have to discard two hand size, don't need Mithril Coats, don't need, let's say, Valorous Stance. And yeah, let's Brainstorm. Putting back Omniscience and maybe a Cure Obus the Sea God. Attack, cast a free omniscience, and uh, that's pretty much game over. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand facing Foreign Clex, always a tough opponent. But uh, yeah, we've got to turn to Helix, turn three Power Stone, hopefully turn four Narset. And uh, yeah, let's Helix the Elf. Trying to slow the opponent down just a tad. Now Big Score gives us a backup plan of ramping into Narset if they answer the Power Stone. Taros Tracker. An oldie but goodie. Alright, time for Narset. At the moment it can still attack pretty cleanly, but of course green could put up some big blocker. Gonna be an invasion for X equals two. Probably getting a ramp card. Maybe an answer to the Power Stone. Masked Vandal comes to mind, but nope, Paradise Druid. So we still have a clean attack with Narsets, and that's where we'll start before doing anything else. Hitting, oof, Omniscience. Yeah, that's uh, pretty good here. And good enough for a concession. So yeah, pretty happy with how this Narset deck turned out. It's a very popular deck in paper for a good reason, just leading to these ridiculous turns. You've got a bit of built-in protection, so your commander's more likely to untap and provide a lot of value. And then you get to play with some of the most ridiculous spells and magic, which is always a lot of fun. So I can highly recommend Narset if you're looking for kind of a just guy big stuff deck. So that'll do it for today's gameplay. Wanna thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.